topic this conference in, will now be recorded. I cannot talk uh, on this topic in its entirety. However, I give you some uh, glimpse based also on my experience, uh, and I will conclude with some example of uh, research in this area at Nazarbayev University in our group. Now, if you think about uh, chemical engineering, uh, uh, doesn't allow to doesn't allow me to to click the the video. Uh, chemical engineering has evolved a lot uh, since uh, the beginning. In the beginning, it was all about uh, uh, all about uh, um, oil and extraction. Then later on, became production of uh, large community uh, commodity. Later on, event uh, became again a production of biological uh, commodities and functional uh, compound. So we're talking about an evolution that span 100 years. We go from a real adventurous uh, task and item like extraction uh, to more refined uh, um, uh, process, product and process like today. For example, this uh, stress lever that I'm using right now is made out of polymer produced by chemical engineers, together with chemists. Almost everything around me from, the, the, from this phone, from the cover, to any kind of material to find around is chemical and material engineering. The difference with respect to a few years ago is that not only common objects like these uh, today is part of chemical engineering, but also objects that are in the, <clears throat> in the medicine cabinet, uh, most of the functional food, loads of interesting and high added value uh, goods uh, are produced by chemical engineers. So what are uh, chemical engineers uh, and uh, what chemical engineers do in the world? Well, as uh, I always say to uh, our fellow engineers, uh, we are jack of all trades and master of them all too. We are very versatile engineers. We start with a broad uh, training in uh, chemistry and physics and in, uh, physical chemistry. And then you can take uh, over um, almost every, every kind of job in this, uh, in, this, in, in this compartment. You can do pharmaceutical, biochemical, collaborate with electronics, uh, uh, play a major part in food, uh, consumer product, uh, materials and environmental engineering, together with environmental engineering, of course. We do research, not only product development, also research in nanotechnology, in nanochemistry, medicinal, uh, medicinal chemistry, together with uh, um, uh, chemists, uh, scale up production by pharmaceutical, and much, much more. Plus, we do modeling. Uh, some, some of us also do uh, big data, a computer a interface with computer science and so on now when you start uh, uh, to choose uh, your career uh, your the university will lead to your career robert is very interested in choosing something that will make you um, independent in the next uh, four or five years well engineers has always been a hit because uh, engineering job pay fairly well all over the world particularly in uh, north america uh, Europe uh, and Southeast Asia, including China, engineering and job are well rewarded. Here, just a few numbers. We are in the let's say top 20, top 15 percent of the job market, which is pretty good. Chemical engineer can be junior, senior, can be process analyst, can be um, process engineering, quality control. There's a variety of positions available. Now. <clears throat> One of the recent trends on which I will focus my presentation is uh, the contamination between uh, chemical engineering and life sciences. Now, until uh, when I was in school, uh, life sciences was extremely different from engineers, not only because of the composition of the students, but also because of the topics. We have no idea what DNA was, uh, what, no idea what uh, a cell was, uh, no idea what uh, pharmacology was. However, in the last few years, uh, um, because of the global change in production, uh, global change in uh, in the way in which we intend a uh, process, uh, an increasing number of chemical engineers uh, move uh, or at least interface with the uh, bioprocess, uh, biochemical engineering, uh, pharmaceutical, and so on. Now, what is a major contribution uh, that the chemical engineering bring uh, to life sciences? The contribution is exemplified in a very famous paper from 2002, Can Biology Fix a Radio? Uh, for engineering, radio is a fairly simple object. You have a diagram, like the one shown in the, in the picture, and by um, testing uh, uh, with your um, electrical tester at various parts of the circuit, you can understand if component uh, is working, is not working, eventually replace the damaged component and uh, make the, the radio functioning again. Now, imagine that instead of that, you have a, a biological uh, organism, a cell or a, a tissue. Well, that's very much more difficult because it's very difficult uh, to uh, use a current biological method to understand uh, 
what is a faulty component. Imagine a faulty component is something that gives you a cancer or something that gives you a very difficult to cure illness. It would be ideal to use this kind of engineering approach to solve this problem by replacing or adjusting a specific component. What we need there is a language, a language that is a, a sim more similar to engineering than the language of biology and is currently being developed. So in the next few years, and already now, we have a lot of engineering taking on the field of pharmacology and uh, even uh, uh, medicine together with biomedical engineers. So in chemical engineering is spread uh, all over this field where systemic knowledge of a certain object is particularly needed. Now, the systemic knowledge is amplified in this uh, much more complex uh, uh, diagram that take on also some uh, societal change. Now, in the past, uh, chemical engineering was just about cheap production of ammonia, cheap production of uh, fuel, cheap production of polymers. Now, we need to start from the outer layer and go into the inner layer. The outer layer has something to do with the sustainable development, the sustainable resources, sustainable society, uh, use uh, uh, of sustainable labor, uh, all, the all the topics related to um, training and education. Then we go to the second layer, going inside the sustainable technology. For each specific task, we want to use a technology which is sustainable, use resources. Uh, please mute, mute your mic if you can. Uh, use resources in a sustainable way. Use resources in a sustainable way. Uh, guys, please, please mute your microphone. Okay. And so on. Now, as we go from uh, uh, in, outside to inside, we arrive to the core of the chemical engineering, which is uh, design, control, and operation, the classical chemical engineering approach. So we have a reactor, we uh, produce something in the reactor, we separate uh, the product from uh, the waste at the end of the process, uh, we sell the product. But all these, uh, which is a conventional chemical engineering, is enclosed in a multiple layers of societal, environmental, and technological um, implications that a modern chemical engineering going into the 21st century must consider. Now, oh, another graph that will interest most of those choosing a career right now, trying to get into either undergrad chemical engineering or grad chemical engineering, it's is my job being relevant, being important, being well, well rewarded? Not now, in the next 10 years. I graduated in four, I will get my PhD in four or five. I want to be sure that I have a job when I come out of debt and the job will be very well paid because I want to eat three times a day and even more. So <clears throat> this kind of gra uh, graph show what is the relevance uh, of the job as engineering in industry. So talk about the private sector. As you know, as you probably know from the newspaper and from other teachers, and as you see here, most of the to hot topic has something to do with the big data integration of computer science and chemical engineering, modeling, forecasting, artificial intelligence, and all this nice buzzword that we are used to consider in 2020 and beyond. Industry 4.0 is a reality in many countries and is a probably one of the biggest private employers and use a lot of chemical engineering and other engineers. So you are definitely in the, in the right track. Personal advice, uh, incorporate a lot of computer science into your future training uh, as a chemical engineering. That would be very well rewarding. Now, <clears throat> um, there are three categories of product, uh, products that the chemical engineering do. The first is commodity, large uh, um, quantity, low cost, ammonia, uh, certain food, uh, polymers, and so on. These are bulk, produced at a fairly low um, unit cost, uh, make use, they make use of a very cheap feedstock and must be done with sustainability in mind. But if you go more into technical specification, you have a molecule based. So you want some uh, refined chemistry, what used to be called fine chemistry. They need to do it fast with a very good efficiency, uh, with a very specific uh, design and possibly something new. That's a discovery component become important. And then the third one on the right, which is the most important now in the next few years, is the microstructure based. So you want to do something, not just a single molecule in solution. You want to do a microstructure, even a nanostructure, that has a certain function. So you have a problem that you got a certain function to be solved, and the chemical engineering must design and tackle the process of, this, of, of delivering this complex structure based on science. So the more we go on, the more chemical engineering, it's a very uh, refined professional 
dealing with the problem not only of cheap production but also of um, quality uh, precision and of course innovation now just before we i go into uh, the part of uh, what we do at nazaba university just a couple of words about myself I've been around uh, quite a bit, uh, starting from Italy when I get my um, bachelor, master, and PhD. Then I moved to US, back to Europe, Netherlands, US again, uh, brief stint in Canada, then Ireland, Singapore, and finally land in Kazakhstan. Now, out of this uh, almost 20 years journey, what is the most important for me? That I, the, part, the part I start as a chemical engineering, but I end up doing biology research since 2003. So I, I have quite a bit of experience in that area and I'm able to speak with biologists and uh, uh, chemical engineers and I absolutely love this multidisciplinarity. And I hope that I will show you why this multidisciplinarity is so important in the modern engineering. So I will tell you one complex chemical engineering research story, which has some ramification in what I do uh, in Azerbaijan University. The story is the well-known story of antibiotic resistance. Now we're dealing with virus right now, so I'm not going to talk about coronavirus, but we know that uh, besides virus, there are bacteria. Bacteria that uh, um, uh, eventually become resistant to the medicine and to the antimicrobial agent that we use to defeat them. This resistance arrives in many ways because of environmental pressure, bad practice, uh, uh, clinical, insufficient uh, clinical protocols, uh, pure fact of biology, facts of life. So uh, it's a huge problem, kill uh, much more people than the virus uh, uh, every year, and it's becoming only bigger and bigger with time. So uh, a lot of uh, research there, a lot of funding to understand what are the causes and how to minimize the consequence of antimicrobial resistance. Antimicrobial resistance is spread with animal, with medicine, with our waste, with the contact in people, in hospital, in hospital people uh, enter healthy, and get out sick. That's quite co common, it's called nosocomial, nosocomial infection. There is not so far a good strategy to fight antibiotic resistance. There's a lot of interesting uh, attempts here and there, but there's not a unified strategy because the problem is not unique. It's a multi-faceted problem, so we need a very creative um, approach. And that is why doctors, uh, uh, chemical engineering, biologists, uh, pharmacologists and many other professionalities are working together to solve a small part of this huge problem that probably will define if we stay on this planet in this number or we have to stay in the much lower number. Basically, we decide if millions of us will die in the next 50 years or we'll be able to remain alive. So there are many approaches to solve this problem. I just want to show you a few of the low cost approach which are obviously more suitable to do uh, research uh, in uh, Kazakhstan because it's uh, fairly cheap and just require a lot of creativity. The first is to, to kill bacteria um, that cause a disease with uh, their own virus. Now there are viruses called bacteriophages that are very dangerous for bacteria and completely innocuous to us. So we can select this, this virus that attack only bacteria, apply to bacteria, bacteria die, the illness is resolved and th these viruses uh, are not able uh, to attack the human host uh, later on. However, this is all fine, but bacteria are able to develop resistance to this pathogen, so to this uh, virus, so this approach uh, has this, some limitation. We have to get a bit more creative. Now, the next step is, of course, uh, modifying, um, uh, modifying the, the virus of the bacteria to make it uh, uh, more resistant to the defense of, of uh, bacteria and to make more useful for a long time. This is done through a strategy called uh, genome editing, a very famous CRISPR. It's not CRISPR, but it's CRISPR. It, the acronym is a bit complicated, but uh, you'll find all over, the, all over the place right now from Wikipedia on. It's a very good strategy to change the genetic information of a virus or a bacteria in order to achieve certain function. In this case, we change the genome of a virus to make it uh, uh, more dangerous for a bacteria, so we can kill bacteria more effectively. Another approach, um, use uh, uh, genome editing to create uh, bacteria that are not uh, uh, patterns anymore, or bacteria that are not patterns, uh, they can substitute uh, our pathogen. This is a more complicated, very creative approach, and it uses what is called microbial engineering. Now, the term engineering means exactly what you think. There are chemical engineers working with microbiologists 
often have a mixed degree that solve this very important problem using this approach. Another approach requires more microbiology oriented is the probiotics. You know, the yogurt that you drink, uh, the iron, uh, all the all these uh, lactobacilli packed functional food that you, you, you take at home. This helps you to maintain a certain uh, microbes in your gut, which make you sick, uh, make, make you less sick. So with these probiotics, uh, you can eventually displace pathogen and solve the, progress, uh, the problem of antibiotic resistance. This can, uh, can be done in the gut, can be done in the mouth, uh, various uh, uh, attempts already. A very interesting case that we are going to work uh, at um, anew with uh, a couple of colleagues from Ireland and from National Lab Astana is to uh, use probiotics in their industry to solve the problem uh, not only of human but also of cow, large animal, what is called productive animals. Again, the, the principle is microbiology, but the way of delivering these probiotics, in this case directly into the other of the cow, is designed by engineers uh, with the engineering in mind because it, it's done for productive purpose. Finally, uh, we can uh, use uh, a mixed approach between uh, antibiotics and probiotics to uh, reinforce the effect of antibiotics um, to cause less resistance in bacteria to antibiotics and so to kill more effectively and remove the illness more effectively with this uh, combined strategy. This is a project that we have uh, a new, it's out for, uh, um, for evaluation right now. We hope to get it funded. And again, it's collaboration between microbiologists, chemical engineers, biotechnologists, and chemists. I can skip this. Uh, this is just details you can see in the slide. What is more important for me um, is to say that uh, all these approaches are very creative. They require a lot of professionality, a lot of different people. It's not just one scientist working in the lab. We're talking about multiple scientists uh, um, working together on a, on a very complex problem. Forget about uh, no, compartmentalized knowledge. It's all about uh, contamination, uh, getting together, uh, co-working, uh, exchanging idea, and so on. The goal is to solve the huge problem. It can be climate change, but that's another department, or can be, in this case, uh, antibiotic resistance, which is definitely related to the work we do at NU. Now, uh, I finished with a, a couple of examples of uh, my work, but before that, I need to introduce a, a new concept, which hopefully will be uh, good for you, in the, for, for, for those of you that choose uh, chemical engineering or biochemical engineering. Now, the concept is uh, biofilms. I cannot see you, so I cannot do my usual demonstration of biofilms, but I will be happy to take any question later. So follow carefully what I'm doing. Take your finger, scrape your teeth gently, and you will observe a nasty, sort of yellowish substance there. That's a, a normal biofilm that occurs in your mouth just because you don't brush continuously your teeth, but you brush twice a day, three times a day, depending on the habit. So biofilms, it's a mix of bacteria embedded in a mucus-like substance, which stick very well to any surface. So well, it's like a glue. It is impossible to clean. That's why when you clean, you need to scrape a lot, like when you, when you brush your teeth. So these biofilms are actually community of bacteria, not individual cells swimming in liquid, but uh, microstructured uh, megalopoly of bacteria that have a lot of uh, properties, it's called emerging properties, in which they collaborate, they communicate, and eventually they attack the host. So uh, biofilms is the most common form for bacteria. More than 99% of the biomass on the planet is in the form of biofilm. They go from the environment to medical biofilm, and are even used for production reasons. For those that are interested, I can explain something about productive biofilms. So biofilms are a fantastic place for antibiotic resistance. Why? Uh, because of the close uh, proximity of bacteria, bacteria exchange information and are able to um, pass each other the strategy that are used to resist to certain antibiotics. So having a biofilm infection is much more difficult to fight than normal infection. This biofilm is resilient to antibiotics and uh, tend to adapt very quickly to novel therapy. So in our lab, we do um, we have a few projects. In one project, we try to identify um, antibiotic-resistant bacteria in a mixed population, like the one that you have in your blood analysis in your serum using electrochemical sensor. And then we try to make this uh, through a microfluid platform. Uh, in, in another part of uh, our work, uh, we try to uh, assess the fact that uh, antimicrobials antibiotics, uh, biocides in general, 
have on, uh, um, on bacteria, both independent as, and as biofilm. On the left, there is a, a project that we, we published a few months ago in which we test the resistance of uh, um, Escherichia coli, a common uh, um, environmental bacteria, to certain pollutants. And this is used to measure the amount of pollutants in the environment. On the right, you have the, um, on the right here, you have a, a test that we just submitted for publication in which we um, determine the effectiveness of certain uh, antimicrobial agent toward uh, biofilms. This is a current work, it's still in progress, not only because of the current crisis, but also because I arrived just last year, so it takes some time to get the lab set at Nazarbayev University. Uh, now, they told me that this is a, a, recruitment, uh, um, a recruitment lecture, but uh, uh, to be honest, I don't want you. We don't want you, we want only very motivated students. So unless you are super motivated and ready to work hard, don't come to Chemical Engineering at Nazarbayev University. And with that, I end my presentation and I'm ready for questions. Thank you. Hello. Uh-huh. Okay. Ah. Thank you, Professor. Uh-huh. Okay. Ah. Thank you, Professor. So now, uh, uh, thank you for your very nice, uh, like very useful, I think, presentation. Uh, so guys, if you have any questions, yeah, you can uh, send to, your, to our chat or um, you can by microphone ask the professor here. So yeah, any questions? Um, Enrique, if you can see, there is a, a symbol of chat. Okay, the, okay, sorry, I have, I, have a I have a question here. Now, it's uh, Asare, available. Uh -huh. Okay, Asare is asking me, why should I choose this university over others to read, as supposed to study, chemical engineering? Well, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> Let me try to explain, then Aida maybe can say something more. I think at this university, uh, it's uniquely present into Kazakhstan, to uh, give a mm -hmm. very good instruction uh, in engineering. We have a multinational uh, uh, faculty, um, faculty with people from uh, all over the, the world, not only from Kazakhstan, but from many other countries, uh, Europe, North America, South America, and of course, Asia. So um, we are well connected and we are able to uh, mm -hmm. give you a peek into what is a, a certain level of international education. Now, I did my, my um, bachelor and master in my own country for two reasons. First, because it's a bit cheaper. And second, because uh, after all, uh, you don't need the, the Harvard for your bachelor and master. It's just a solid institution where to study. After all, after that, if you want to do the jump and to become really uh, something strong and different, well, you may, go, you may try to go to the best university. But I think it's better to stay at home for bachelor and master because the quality here is pretty good compared to the quality of other universities in the world. Now, Anastasia is asking me, that's a very interesting idea by Biofilms. Uh, if you want some information about Biofilms, uh, please email me. Uh, my email, uh, I'm writing in the, in, the chat, in the chat here, it's enrico.marsili uh, at nu.edu.kz. Feel free to write, uh, I'd be happy to answer. Now, Anastasia asking, are there any development related to production of film to use instead of plastic bags to save environment? Yes, there is. Uh, this is actually quite uh, old because uh, the first uh, um, biodegradable product, polymer was produced uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, polylactic acid, uh, PHA, and so on. These are uh, all good polymers. They tend to be a bit brittle. And of course, they are biodegradable, so they can only use for a temporary packaging like food. Uh, the research is there, and it's actually quite common. So, if I'm not uh, really uh, at par for what considered the recent development, but yes, there is a lot of research up there, and there are many companies already producing these uh, degradable films. Aru is asking me more about the undergrad curriculum. Aida, maybe you want to say something. Uh, Maybe I can say a few words and then you complete. Aida? 
Okay. Now the undergraded undergraded uh, term. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Professor. Say it again. Could you tell about um, course curriculum? That okay. And now the I can yeah. uh, comp uh, like uh, add some about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the core curriculum at uh, Nazarbayev University uh, consists of the standard topic in chemical engineering, which are mass transfer, energy transfer, momentum transfer, so transfer phenomena, unit operation, uh, which are implemented transfer phenomena, unit process that implement chemical reaction, um, multi-phase systems, classical chemical engineering like distillation, environmental chemical engineering like wastewater treatment, Biochemical engineering, like the one that I teach, so bioprocess uh, and the inter topics at the interface between uh, um, chemical engineering and microbiology. Food engineering, which is taught by um, Professor Ruben uh, Mercado Prieto. Then we have uh, a topic at the interface between uh, chemical mm -hmm. and biomedical engineering, which is taught by Professor Kuhl, Professor Ellisken. Then we have uh, air chemistry, also quite interesting, taught by mm -hmm. Professor Tor Tor and uh, we have thermodynamics, which is part uh, of a uh, core. You cannot uh, go through a course on chemical engineering without uh, uh, thermodynamic or chemical engineering. And of course, loads of uh, uh, math, physics, chemistry, and uh, numerical methods and computer science. Now, Anastasia asked, uh, uh, yeah, it is true, the biopolymers uh, are common but are still more expensive than the classic uh, polyethylene film. Indeed, that's, uh, that's a problem. It's not so much uh, the material uh, property, but it's the cost. And we need people that can go uh, through uh, improvement in the process uh, to make more uh, uh, competitive for cost. Any other question? Oh, sorry, I missed a question. Wait a moment, wait a moment. I have a question here from uh, Diana. Okay, Diana, uh, I have a question concerning okay. title of research. No, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, professor, also question one question from Diana Carbezzo. Yeah, uh, I have a question concerning mm -hmm. the title of research in master or PhD program. Could I choose, for instance, current discipline in nuclear and law? Wow, that is absolutely interesting not my cup of tea i think we don't have uh, per se nuclear engineering uh, at the new but we may have some people that uh, know more about this topic i suspect that we don't have uh, uh, nuclear engineering but yes uh, um, talk with some other faculty uh, and i think that this is in almaty more than in um, north mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. um also, I uh, for Aru, I sent here. Uh, Michael Lewis is uh, I. Michael Lewis is me. It's Aida. So I just I, before I told that I'm from his account is online. So uh, Aru, I, I have sent here some link for um, undergraduate uh, program admission, some requirements and more information there. You can just go by this link and uh, just uh, uh, if you have any questions, just uh, write to uh, to this email. We are uh, every time ready to answer any of your questions. I'm sending you this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, any other questions? <clears throat> oh, this is some, uh, some mistake here. Set admissions. Thoughts and you. You, but mm -hmm. This one is correct one. Okay. Uh, so um, if you have any questions, you can write to uh, Professor already uh, provided here his email address. Uh, if you have any questions about chemical engineering, um, some about your research, you can uh, write to Professor or to us. That's admissions. Uh, this is a school office, um, school office uh, email address. Uh, you can write there uh, and ask any of your questions. And the deadline for uh, submit online application is uh, for graduate programs. I mean, 
for master programs is my May 12th, for PhD programs June first, uh, first of June, and for undergraduate programs uh, 30th of April. So yeah, just um, it, this is a, just for your information. I think all the requirements we have sent to your uh, email address um, previously. So any other questions? Uh, yeah. Guys, uh, I understand. Very. Uh, sorry. Yes. Hey. Uh, I have a question. Uh, Currently, I'm studying in bachelor in uh in second course. So like uh, I in the future like I have to be chemistry teacher. But like I'm thinking about to change my profession. Like I want to be chemical engineer, but I don't have any subjects which related with physics and mathema mathematics. I like. Uh, all my uh, study program uh, uh, is related with overall chemistry, like physical chemistry, colloidal chemistry, organic chemistry, but there is no uh, mathematics, calculus, physics, and something like that. Uh, so am I able to apply for this program or so? Yeah. Um, Aida, let me, ask you, let me answer the first part of the question. The question is divided in two parts. Can you apply administratively? Aida will answer, I suspect so. Now, the other question is, the other, the other part of the question is, is it worth to switch between chemistry and chemical engineering at the end of the second year? That's a bit more difficult question. Uh, we have quite a bit of um, students from chemistry in our department that join for the master or for the PhD. Ultimately, they run into some distress because uh, it is a very different topic. Chemical engineering is one thing, chemistry is another. Chemical engineering is more, more, more similar to physics than chemistry. So don't get tricked by the name, that's an old mistake. Plus, if you say that you are studying chemistry to become a teacher, you are probably uh, studying a, a specific subject which are relevant to secondary education. Moving uh, to chemical engineering is still possible, but expect uh, to lose uh, one semester and to need to do a lot of work to catch up so that would be my, i think that you should try if you really want because there's nothing worse than being stuck in a topic that you don't like but be prepared to do some extra work mm -hmm. i uh, totally agree with professor if it's your um, aim so you can of course uh, you can try to apply and uh, show your um, yeah like your high motivation in the interview but yeah, of course, it will be not so easy uh, to study, but the first semester will be a little bit hard for you. But if you wish it, you, you can do it if you try your best. Administratively, uh, administratively you can, uh, of course, apply. Uh, as I told, you need, uh, your, we need your bachelor diploma, uh, then IELTS certificate 6.5 uh, for uh, main program. Uh, also, um, two uh, uh, like recommendation letters from your professor, from your uh, employee, uh, then uh, one motivation letter. Uh, I think that's all, yeah. Uh, then uh, you can apply. Mm -hmm. First of all, it will be interview. Then you can receive uh, like a letter for uh, letter rejection letter or offer letter. Okay, there are two more questions. Um, Asare. Uh, is interesting in uh, research in antimicrobial activity. Uh, again, uh, my email uh, is uh, here. So, uh, Asare, please uh, um, feel free to write me anytime. I'd be happy to give you more information who does what uh, at the new, and um, if you have more specific questions, I'll be able to answer. Aru is asking a very interesting information uh, question. There is a possibility of minor in economics, uh, major in chemical engineering. I think. So mm -hmm. the project, uh, there is a master uh, course in uh, uh, engineering management, but I think that the, there is a possibility of doing a uh, uh, minor in economics, which is a very cool topic because we need engineers, uh, you need managers that understand both engineers and economics. So that would be interesting, but you need to speak uh, with people in the school office to understand what are the practicalities involved in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any other questions?
uh, I have one question also. So, uh, uh, am I able uh, to do internship in your university, in your department? Now, um, um, sorry, who are you? You're, you're just Melissa Despi. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, yes, you are able to do internship. Are you in Almaty right now? Uh, no, actually, uh, I'm from, uh, I live in Aktubia and study there. Okay, okay. Uh, you can do both undergraduate and graduate internship. Now, um, the problem is if this internship is recognized by your university, and that's a local problem, you need to, need to ask them, the other problem is the resources uh, to get funded here. So, uh, of course, moving uh, away from home is, is not cheap, so you need to discuss with your prospective supervisor if there is any resources or raise your own funding through some sponsorship. But uh, we have a lot of people coming from internship, from Almaty, for example, uh, and that's quite common uh, thing, both at the, at the undergrad and grad level. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now, now Diana has another question. Do you know something about doctor program by Peter Howey? No, I'm not sure who is Peter Howey. Uh, Ida, you know him? No, sorry. <laughs> we don't know. I don't, doesn't ring a bell. Peter Howey. Yeah, and, uh, from which department do you, do you, do you have any uh, like additional uh, yeah, information yeah, yeah. about him? In a grad, grad school of public policy. Um, oh, I see. You, you should ask him directly. This is a completely different school. Uh, okay, Diana. <laughs> now, uh, Nur Ligur is asking, now I cannot pass ELTS. Okay, for the ELTS, we just decided today, there will be an announcement, uh, I, I believe, uh, that they will be substituted by, only for this year, by Duolingo test, right? Yes, yes, you are right. Uh -huh. so please ask Aida for further information on that, okay? Now, Asare, mm -hmm. uh, Asare, uh, I think it, Asare, if you, if you hear me, please write me an email. He said that uh, his network went off. Please write me an email. I cannot reply in private for some reason. No, no, I can. Right? Just a moment. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Um, I think, at Diana, I answered your question. Ah, title of research in Master and PhD program. Uh, yeah, I answered it, and Diana. Uh, I think I need to talk with people at and new because I'm not uh, aware of anyone that does nuclear engineering at and new. But there are people that collaborate with Rush on that. So you may want to talk with specific investigators. They may know better. Definitely not uh, not my field. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About this, uh, guys, about this Duolingo, uh, Duo, Duolingo, yeah, uh, test. Uh, there will be some additional information for you, or everything will be sent to your um, email address. Now, um, sorry. Now we are waiting uh, for the proper information from admission department. Uh, so as soon as possible, uh, yeah, like we will send to you, okay? Duolingo, it is a um, kind of um, examination uh, for testing your um, uh, testing your English level. This is like uh, IELTS, but Duolingo, it is like online test. Uh, because of quarantine, yeah, we are uh, moving to this, uh, just for this year, we are moving uh, to Duolingo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aru is asking a, a very important question, and I think I need a, one time to, uh, to answer. The question of Aru, which I'm sure is the question of many others, is uh, can you tell about the job perspective for chemical engineers in Kazakhstan? Now, uh, I can actually answer this question because I collaborate with KMG. KMG is probably one of the largest employer, Kazmona Gas Oil, one of the largest employer of chemical engineers in uh, Kazakhstan. Now, I thought initially that it was just an oil company. In, instead, uh, after working with them, I noticed that they are really good in a lot of things. 
they're good uh, in uh, management, they're good in uh, uh, environment, they're good in water chemistry, uh, geology, and now they're even a field in uh, oil microbiology. So um, not Nur Sultan necessarily, they are uh, all over the place from Aktau, Akirau, Uzen, or Field and so on. They are really a, a good company. Other than that, there are some uh, major uh, uh, French uh, company doing grand restructuring in the south. There are, of course, loads of uh, oil and gas company. There's a, a very good, uh, um, very good uh, match, and they search for local engineers of high quality. Um, other than that, the industry is still working. So not too much. There is something in environmental, like waste water treatment, but the, the most opportunities are clearly in a multinational company and KMG working in, uh, in natural resources. But if you are be, be very strong and very smart, why not start in your own industry? Maybe get some uh, startup program and try to do something interesting. It's your country. Now, another question, um, Diana. Oh, okay, no, Diana just said thank you. You are welcome, Diana. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Oh, Michael, no, this is you. Yeah, it's me. I just sent some like <laughs> uh, brief information about Duolingo English. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, about Duolingo, you will be you will receive uh, like detailed information to your email addresses from admissions department. Just uh, yeah, little bit wait because it is in the process of approval now. Uh, so yeah, later you will receive. Let me copy pass from this. Yes, of course you can. Uh, after this webinar, we will send to you uh, the record of this webinar. Uh, so just uh, uh, all you will receive everything. Okay. Uh, so uh, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <laughs> Sorry, it's like a little bit noise here. My kid is near me, so that's why. <laughs> okay, um, so if you do not have any other questions, guys, yeah, uh, I want to uh, thank you, uh, all Aida, participants. Aida, Aida let me say uh -huh. one, one, one more thing. Uh, yes. Guys, uh, I suppose that. Uh, most people here listening are very young. We're talking about 18, 19, uh, early 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, if I was you, I'd be very excited of embarking in, in this adventure. We are talking about uh, a, taking university in a very difficult time for the world, but the, this problem may be an opportunity. So uh, I think it would be just a very interesting adventure. And believe me, I knew it's a good place to start your career. Later, you can go wherever you want, but starting here, it's local, it's close enough, it's not expensive, and you can focus on learning rather than focusing on raising money for your program. Uh, I wish you the best, and I hope to see some of you either in undergrad or grad class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we wish you to see, we hope that we will see you among our students uh, soon. And, and uh, we hope that you will enjoy your uh, wonderful years at our university. So we wish you be safe, take care in this uh, difficult time now. Mm -hmm. So you are welcome to uh, to apply to our university and to um, to our chemical and uh, environmental engineering department. So uh, I would like to thank first of all our professor. Um, uh, Enrique Marcelli for this, I think, very useful. Even I'm not a chemical engineer, but it was really interesting for me. <laughs> so I, I'm really thankful. Uh, thank you very much. Also, thank you for our participants. Uh, just wait for me a feedback from this webinar. Uh, thank you. Be safe. Bye. See you in our next webinars. Thank you, Professor. Bye bye. <laughs>